Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is series 386, and this is lesson four. And the topic is the king, thy kingdom come, coming out of Matthew 6 and 10. So this is the fourth part of the Lord's Prayer. And like I said before, we're going to read down the Lord's Prayer and help you better understand it. Why it's so important. Why Jesus made it, why Jesus made it so important to say and I and I don't think people understand it really truly because I just hear too many people saying that we don't have to say the Lord's Prayer uh, as if it doesn't have any meaning and it does have meaning it has a lot of meaning and that's why God want me to explain it to you so that you will understand that the Lord's Prayer is very important to him so now let's get down to the instruction. I mean, the introduction is this. Jesus, in all these 11 lessons, I'm always going to start off with this same uh, sentence because it, God wants us to get it embedded in our minds how valuable the Lord's Prayer is. And it says, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to reverence, honor, and respect what is deeply felt and outward demonstrated demonstrates God's awesome loving power and a and a sound mind he's he, he he's letting you know that he has loving power and also a sound mind that he wants you to have which is very important because without a sound mind, you can't do anything. You will have fear all the time. And God did not give us the spirit of fear. But he gave us the power of love. He gave us the power of love and a sound mind. That's what he gave us. So we must accept his gift of power. Especially love. And especially a sound mind. He gave us that power. He did. He wanted us to have it because we need it. And that how that power comes through the Holy Spirit. And it says, uh, within our prayers, uh, within our prayers, uh, ought to be a my a, a mindset that recognizes God's kingdom purpose, and concerns itself with uh, furthering those purposes. First and foremost, the Lord's uh, dominion must be evident in the lives of his followers in praying the Lord, the king, thy kingdom come. Meaning, means Asking the Heavenly Father to help us in our lives to be uh, faithful, obedient, authentic, and e effective Christians. This is why it's so important to know this Lord's Prayer. We spread God's kingdom not only with words, but also through our actions. but also through our actions, but through our character as well. The way we act, the way we talk, the way we walk. That's what Christians, that's what unbelievers need to see, that we are different. We are set apart. Thy kingdom come. The first scripture is Matthew 7, 13 through 14 coming out of the King James Version or uh, the New King James Version and it says a narrow gate number 13 13 says enter the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way 
that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. There are many who go in through this way, many. And it leads to destruction. You're not going in it through the Lord for the, for the same reason that the Lord wants you to go in it for. You're going in it for different reasons. Just like people join church for different reasons and not for the true reason. But these people did not receive the kingdom of God. These are the ones that God, in the last day, he's going to say, who are you? I never knew you. I never knew you. So you don't want God to tell you that. Number 14 says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Because this is what Jesus was teaching his disciples, how hard it's going to be. That's why he sat them down on the mount and taught them, this is what you got to go through. This is how you must be. This is how you must walk. This is how, much you, this is how you must talk and act. And it's going to be hard. It wasn't an easy way that Jesus described. When you read Matthew uh, chapter 5, Chapter, the 5th the chapter, the 6th chapter, and the 7th chapter. It explains that what his, it explains what his disciples had to go through. So it wasn't easy for Jesus. Jesus had a, 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 a hard time. And this is what this narrow gate and difficult is the way really means. Um, so um But the thing is, we have to reverence God's kingdom because this is what's what brings holiness. His kingdom come. His will be done. Because his way is holy and full of love. So, Matthew, let's go to the next one. Matthew 25, 31, and 33. It's the final judgment. Number 30, 31 says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all of the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. And this is when we, we will reverence God's kingdom when it comes. Now we can reverence God because he did his job on earth. He fulfilled his duties as God as God asked him. He obeyed God and fulfilled it. He set the captives free, which is us. He set the people on earth free so they don't have to fear Satan anymore. That's the whole key. We don't have to fear Satan no more. He cannot jimmy and act out to make us think that he's in charge. He's in control. Because that's that's the worst thing you can do is having people trying to control your life. Jesus didn't try to control nobody's life because he knew that you had a will. You had um, your own your, your own self had to tell, would tell you what to do and what not to do. You had a choice in the matter. So he allowed you to make that choice. And so number, uh, what was that? number 32 says, All the nation will be gathered in his presence, and he will uh, separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. The bad people and the good people are going to be separated. God's people and Satan people. Those who belong to Satan and those who belong to God. You can't straddle the fence. There's nothing in between. You either you either is or or you're not of God. 
So these are the people that will be separated. Um, but then the ones who go to God must reverence God's kingdom. We must reverence God's kingdom. Uh, number 33 says, he will put, no, no, he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. The goats meaning bullheaded. They always want to, uh, goats always want to butt you and, 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 and do things their way. Sheeps are real humble and meek. And they will do what the shepherds say do. Those are different. Those are the difference between the two. Uh, let's go to this third scripture. And John 13, 31 through 35. The topic is Jesus predicts Peter's den denial. And number 31 says, As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. And God will be glorified because of him. It was it's time to reverence God, reverence God, reverence Christ through God. Reverence God through Christ, I'm sorry. It's time to reverence God through Christ. In holiness because now his kingdom can truly come in us his Holy Spirit can come and live in us because of what Christ just is doing he's going home now and he will sit on the right hand of the Father with all power will be given to him all power will be given to the to the Christ Number 32 says, and since God re received glory because of his son, he will give his own glory to the son. And he will do so at once. Waste no time. He's going to do it at once. God's kingdom is coming in holiness now. Because of what Christ has done. 33 says, dear children, I will be with you only a little longer and as i told the jewish leaders you will search for me but you cannot come where i am going number 34 says so now i am giving you a new commandment listen at this love each other it's all it's simple just love each other just as i have loved you he said, I've laid the foundation. I've laid the, 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 the ground out for you to see in action what loving one another really means because I have loved you. That's how God's kingdom is coming in love and holiness. That's how it's going to come. It only can come through love. Everything must be done in love. If it's not done in love, then you're not living in his kingdom. You're still living in that old nature, which is Satan's kingdom. 35 says, you love for your love for one another will prove to the world. This is what's going to do. It's going to prove to the world that you are my disciples. That's the only way it's going to be proven. It's because of your love that you have for your fellow man and your enemies. Now it shall be proven because Christ proved it that way. He required us to prove it the same way. Uh, let's go to, go to 1 John 3, 4 through 10. And the title is The Command to Love. It's all about love, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about love. Number four says, 
everyone who sins is breaking God's law. For all sin is contrary to the law of God. All sin is contrary to the law of God. Number five says, and you know that Jesus came to take away our sin. You know that. And there is no sin in him. Six, anyone who con continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him. If you keep on living in, living in your adulterous life, you don't, you don't know him. You don't even know him. This is what he's trying to tell you. This is how serious the matter is. You don't know your father. Or understand who he is. You don't even understand God's ways. It says reverence God in love and holiness. This is how we must do it. Number seven says, dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. We people do what is right. It shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. Number eight, but when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. If you keep on sinning, you belong to the devil. Number nine says, those who have been born into God's family does not make a practice of sinning. This is the whole key. We don't practice sin anymore. Yeah, we may sin on occasions. We're trying to deny the flesh, but sometimes the flesh still have a control on us. But we're, we're still trying to suppress that, 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 that uh, emotion, that feeling to want something so bad. We're trying to kill it. God has already killed it on the cross. But now we have to know that it's dead. And ask God. And ask God what to do about it. And ask God what to do about it. And we can't stop. We have to keep going. Um, because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. It's a struggle. That's what um, Romans chapter 7 talks about. It's a struggle. But at least we're trying. And this is how God works with you. He know that you, he know that you want to give up that old man. Or, 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 or woman. He know you want to do that. So he helps you. That's what the Holy Spirit, that's why he sent the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you along that rough, rough, rough way. Trans, that rough transition from the old to the new. He, you need to help. 10 says, so now we can tell our children, children of God, and who are children of the devil? Now we can, we can, we know who, we know the difference. We know what a child of God looks like, and we know what a child of the devil looks like. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love, does not love other believers, does not belong to God. If you don't know how to love your brothers and sisters in church or out on the street. It tells you plain and clear. John makes it real plain and clear. You not you don't even belong to God. You acting out something like the Pharisees and Sadducees. You're hypocrites, in other words. Don't be a hypocrite. Be the real deal. Okay, the next strip is First uh, Timothy two, uh, one through eight, and this is instructions about worship. The proper way to worship God so that his kingdom will come. All right, then I, number one says, I urge you, first of all, to pay, to pray for people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. 
So if you don't know what to pray for, this is what you pray for. You pray for people. Ask God to help them. Intercede for them. And then give thanks to God. Number two says, uh, pray this way for, and this is what Jesus told us when we pray, pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This is how we pray. That's what the Lord's prayer is all about. Number two, pray this way. For kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peacefully. Pray for those kings. Pray for your president. Even though you don't like him, you didn't vote for him, pray for him anyway. Pray that God's kingdom will come in him so that we can live peacefully and quiet lives make, uh, uh, marked by goodness and um, identity. This is the way we have to do it. Number three says, this is God. This is good and peace. No. This is good and pleases God, our Savior. Because now we are reverencing God in love and holiness. So that pleases God. Because that's how we worship in love. You come to church, you can't worship nobody and you hating your brother right there next to you. No. You're a hypocrite. God don't hear you. And I have to be honest about it. He does not hear you because you do not have a repentant heart. Jesus even told you, if you have sinned against your brother and you come to the altar to pray, he said, don't pray. Leave that altar, go to your brother, and you ask for forgiveness. And once you've done that, then come back to the altar. That's how serious this matter is about loving your brother and your sister. Because God don't want to hear your prayer when you have not asked your brother for, for forgiveness. Whew, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord, help me. Number four says, who wants everyone to be saved and, and to understand the truth? Number five says, for there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity. The man Jesus Christ. That's the only way it can be done. Number six says, give, he gave his life to purchase freedom. It was said now. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. We are free. We're not slaves anymore. This is the, and we're not under anyone control. Do not let people control you. If it's not coming through the word of God, no. When you see controlling people, it's a sign that they're living for the devil. Understand what I'm saying. That's what Satan did. That's what he's still doing. He's trying to control people. He tried to control heaven. By turning angels against God. That's what happened. Because he wanted to be in control. He wanted to be the head. Watch those people in church. They're dangerous. This is the message God gave to the world. As, as just the right time. This is the message that he gave him. He purchased freedom for everybody. Number seven says, and I have been chosen as a preach as a preacher and apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not uh, I'm not exaggerating just telling the truth. Why? 
because he reverenced the kingdom of God in holiness. This is what Timothy is really saying. Uh, he reverenced God. He loves God. He respects God. He honors God. This is what he's saying to the people. And this is how you must be. Number eight says, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands. Hmm. Holy hands. Holy hands. Lifting up God, free from anger and controversy. When you come to church, your mind shouldn't be on nothing but Jesus. Not what you did yesterday, not what you're going to do today, not what you're going to do tomorrow. In anything, any wrongdoing, worship God with holy hands. Now for the conclusion. Um, mm, mm, mm. Christ modeled, model for prayer. We have confirmation that intercessory prayers for the salvation of souls is a worthwhile um, is worthwhile in prayer. The Lord's Lord's kingdom come is the same as saying, Dear Lord, please open the hearts of the of my loved ones. Please open the heart of my loved ones, friends and co-workers and neighbors to receive your gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. God's kingdom will expand as more people turn to Christ for salvation. They enter the kingdom when they come to know the uh, uh, crucified king of the kingdom. People need to, people need the gospel. We also know from uh, scripture that God wants all sinners to be saved. God wants everybody to be saved. He don't want nobody to miss out because He's a loving God. He's an understanding God. And this is what we have to realize. God is sitting there waiting for you. And he's laid the foundation already so that you could come to him. So come to him, people of God. Acknowledge him. Let his kingdom come into your life because you will be a much better person. So my my brother and sister, we thank you and I hope you got a great uh, uh, um, a lot out of this lesson. Today is one of my days I just didn't feel good but I knew I had to push through to get it done. And that's what we all have to do. We all have to push through regardless of how we feel. It just reminds me when I was an athlete, I had to push through no matter how that day felt or how much I hurt mentally or physically. We all got to push through and go through. There are days when I come in here, I just feel so good. I'm ready to go, ramming to go. But this is just one of those days I didn't feel that way. So I thank you for listening to me and putting up with me even through the rough times. Because surely we're going to have those rough days and we're going to have to push through. For the sake of Christ, he pushed through. If he can do it, you can do it. And God bless you, my brothers and sisters. God loves you. I love you. And continue to live for Christ no matter what.
And remember, keep pushing through. You're going to make it.